This is, uh, you heard me talk yesterday on the uh, game review, so you got most of my thoughts there. If you haven't listened to it yet, you can check it out. All right after this is done, but uh, most of my thoughts are, are, are there, uh, of course, and uh, this is more about getting you guys in here, kind of call-in show type. It will be recorded, and then I'll put the show out later, but uh, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for hopping on. Plenty, uh, plenty of storylines, of course, even after, uh, I mean, yeah, that was a dominating win. You know, of course, you'd like to see Florida play better in the second half, that first, that first half. That's pretty much all you needed to see uh, as far as the Gators taking that game serious enough and then getting up by a big score at halftime. Game was over with at that point. Would you like to see the team better? Team play better in the second half? Absolutely. Uh, as I said yesterday in the uh, review episode, yeah, I mean, there, there's going to be some lineups that you won't see all year long uh, going into that second half. So, uh, offensive linemen probably not going to be playing together a whole lot. <laughs> Some guys on defense not going to be playing together a whole lot with 11 of those guys. Uh, you know, those are guys that are just going to be filling in for hopefully, you know, starters that don't necessarily go down with injury, but, you know, neither breather. Uh, but injuries have happened too. But, you know, a lot, a lot of those 11 guys that you saw on defense, a lot of those five guys you saw on the offensive line, they're not going to be playing together, uh, you know, com- coming up this year. There's just going to be filling, some fill-in roles. I mean, hopefully we get to see them a good bit, and they, they're they playing in some blowouts in those similar situations in SEC play, but uh, don't want to get ahead of ourselves uh, when we go to that. But, of course, big week, big week here. Florida, Alabama. I mean, it has taken – you know, these first couple games have put in a, a damper just a little bit on what we thought this game and what this week would feel like going into uh, the, the, the Alabama week. Uh, I think the only the only way the excitement would come up would be okay. Ar is good to go, and he's starting quarterback. And I think that that would ramp up the excitement level back up to where it was about two weeks ago before the season even started. And everybody looking forward to this week. Uh, but you know, I try, just you know, I'm going to put the word out there. I'm, I'm going to try myself, but you know, try and, and treat this week like I like we were two weeks ago, as we were excited for the season to start. Uh, this big game coming up, Florida, Alabama. Uh, look, I mean. You might as well. Who, who knows? You, you, you don't don't look back and say, "Oh well, you know, we should have had more fun that week." You know, if if Florida goes out there and does uh, what a lot of people don't think they will do on Saturday versus Alabama, so you know, have fun this week with it. Uh, if you want to go troll, go do some trolling. If you, you know, uh, of course, you know, Gainesville is going to be ready to go anyway on Saturday. But go out there and have fun with it this week anyway. Who knows? Who knows how it all play out? You don't want to look back and say you, you wish you had more fun with it heading head in this game. So however you fell a couple weeks ago, I know it's probably a little different after a couple games. Uh, but, you know, at least go try and have fun with it. Go be go be a fan this week. Go be, I'm, I'm going to try my hardest to go be that fan this week. But uh, I, I, but don't get me wrong. I get it. I, I, I get it with what the last couple of weeks have shown. And, and um, uh, maybe the expectation has changed just a little bit. But uh, do it. Let's go be fans. Let's go be fans this week. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get your get it on for, for a big victory on Saturday. But, uh, yeah, guys, go home. Get in here. Uh, let me know your thoughts from Florida's game versus USF, how that played out. We know – I know quarterback's going to dominate the, the conversation all week uh, in every avenue. Uh, before I get in here, the last – you know, Emory uh, – I mean, AR had the MRI Saturday night. Uh, I think uh, – Pretty much just kind of going to be questionable all week. I don't think Mullen's going to literally let us know too much about how that goes. Um, and, and, and in that fashion, we'll, uh, it's, just, it's hard to tell. The, the status of AR pretty much is you know unknown right now. Uh, I, I doubt he'd be 100% uh, Saturday versus Alabama. This hamstring's a lingering issue dating back to spring. Had some flare-ups in the fall camp as well, so... That's just a, a, a nagging injury that only rest is really going to help. And that's something you're not going to get this time of year unless you just don't want him to play at all. And that might be the case. So uh, we'll get Mullen today at 1 o'clock on Monday. We'll see if he sheds any more light on it. I, I, I doubt it. But uh, look, I, from everything I could gather, from everything I was told, it was not a tear. So that's good news. Uh, just straining that uh, hamstring, and we'll see uh, what, what Saturday holds for, for, for Anthony Richardson. But uh, if you guys listen to the, the uh, USF review, Yesterday, you know, I pretty much made uh, my opinion be known that, you know, I'm full, uh, fully on board, maybe a week later than a lot of you guys, but fully on board with the, uh, the, the switch to AR being the starting quarterback. And don't get me wrong, I thought he probably, after game one, if it was me, I probably would would have made the choice to go ahead and switch too. 
Uh, but, you know, giving Emory one more chance and also I know kind of the, the way I think sometimes is the way I know the coaching staff is going to go with it as well. And there was no way the coaching staff was going to go ahead and make that move uh, pretty early. But I think it's uh, I think it's time. I think it's time. So, all right, here we go. Get Charlie in here. What's up, Charlie? Uh, I don't hear you. It doesn't say you're on mute, though. So, not really sure. Not really sure what's going on. Let me get KB in here. Hey, KB. Hey. Hey, Dave. Uh, Kamara here. Um, I'm actually, you know, after seeing what AR did in these first two games, um, I feel like maybe he's such a special talent that we may only have him this year and the next year. So <laughs> Man, I'm glad you found even that more critical that we need to uh, get that opportunity to see him play uh, and maximize his time at Florida. Yeah, that, that that is certainly a thought there with AR. You know, you, all you have to do, no matter what happened last year, no matter what happened with COVID, no matter what happened with that season, all you have to be is three years removed from high school. Uh, so if – you know, he is that special talent we think he can be. And if he's ready to go to the NFL, you get him this year, you get him next year. And that's pretty much it is what you get from AR. Now, of course, we can probably get ahead of ourselves a little bit, but that is that is part of it. If he goes out there and shows out and if he can continue to do – look, he's not going to keep the production up that we've seen the first couple of weeks when SEC plays start. That's just – first of all, asking too much of him. Uh, and that, that expectation would be a crazy expectation, but – a lot of those things are special. A lot of those special things will carry over. A lot of those things he'll be able to do in SEC play. Not not as consistently, but he'll be able to do those things, I think, in SEC play. And you're right. If he continues to do those the rest of this year and next year, he'd have a very good shot at going to the NFL. And you only get two years out of him. Uh, so, you know, that, that plays into it as well uh, where they are about wanting to get him there and, and not, uh, you know, waste every play, every opportunity you have to have him out there on the field, uh, it, it make it make the most of it. So um so, I mean, it's so fun to watch. So so exciting to watch. And that, that that's part of it. It's not that he's just playing better. It's just what he's actually doing. I mean the big plays, the explosion on the ground, in the air. It's it, it, right now it's a complete package. And of course we'd love to see more of it. We'd love to see more snaps. We'd love to see more plays. Some of it's been taken away by him himself by hitting so many explosion, explosive plays that the plays aren't adding up. But look, I, I was a, I'm a big proponent of explosive plays. You guys know that about me. I think that's what that, that's just what the game is right now. And you, you can do that on a consistent basis. You're going to be scoring a whole lot of points and putting a whole lot of pressure on a lot of you know, defenses out there, and then the opposing offense of having to keep up as well. So. I'm a big proponent of explosive plays, and they seem to happen on a more consistent basis with AR right now. And that 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 that's the leading charge for me in making the change. It's just you're actually scoring. The explosive plays are there, but I, I'm with you. I like that's that that is another part of it. I I want to get him out there as soon as possible because you may only get this year and next year with him. Oh. All right, Dave. I'll try this there you again go. now. My yep. internet's working. All right. So, you know, I know we all want to talk about offense, you know, the QB situation, but I want to really talk about this defense, yep. you know. Um, I, I'm I, Through two games, I'm not very impressed with Grantham's defense again this year. Um, I know we'll have stuff dialed up, but, you know, this was a, a USF team that got shut out by NC State the week before, so – uh, I just want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, and I, and I did say in the preview last week, getting getting another shutout was going to be unlikely uh, there for you. I mean, the law of averages come into play. You're not really – shutting a team out two weeks in a row is pretty tough to do. Um, that's just that's just football. That's just – you know, unless, unless you're really, really awful, which, I mean, USF could be uh, there. Uh, I will say, you know, it's their, their scores, you know, uh, Emory's, Emory's turnovers led to – a field goal and a touchdown. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong, you'd like to see the defense step up and, and, and make that stop versus USF, but it's not like USF drove the field uh, on this Florida defense to get those scores. Uh, you know, till later on in the game, a lot of the backups were in and, and, and all that. I, I didn't like the early drive where they were able to mount some plays up. Defense, once again, not be able to get off the field on third down. That was really about it as far as success on third down. It was that second drive of the game, I believe, uh, for, for USF and 17 plays, if I'm remembering right. And they were just able to convert third down after third down. That was the one drive I think you could go back and look at as far as when the starters were out there that – 
probably wasn't up to where it needed to be. After that, you did see him tighten coverage. You did see him uh, create a little more pressure. You saw the things that we asked about last week and started seeing the things that we – and I shared a couple plays there uh, on Twitter yesterday about where you could actually see the coverage tighten up, guys playing the first down marker in front of the first down marker, not behind the first down marker. And much of that second half, as I said, you know, coming into this thing, you, there, those were 11 guys out there that are barely going to see the field together in any situation this season unless Florida just gets injury prone on defense. And a lot of those guys are just going to be fill-in type of players. Um, some of those guys will play a lot, but they'll be playing with the starters. They won't necessarily be playing with other second, third string uh, defenders, and you, you get that. And it, some, of, some of what you saw is what you're going to get when there's a bunch of backups out there. And, of course, as far as backups should be better, they should be out there and, and you know, compared to USF, be able to, to maybe clamp down a, a, a bit more. But I, to me, on both sides of the ball, there wasn't much game planning going on these last couple of weeks. It was go out there and play, put some put some film on tape, and we'll see where we can use you coming up when the SEC play starts. Um, so, but I get it. I, and I, I said this before the season started. These first two games were, to me, and I, not going to tell much about Grantham. Everybody's going to make their determination on Grantham on on on, uh, on Saturday versus Alabama. You may be able to take some, you know, glean some things from these first couple of games that you probably wanted to see uh, better. But I, I I don't necessarily think it's any indication of what would happen uh, Saturday. I think if Florida had played just a little bit better on defense these first couple of weeks, I think whatever happens Saturday is going to happen anyway. Uh, I, I and I, the tighter coverage the. Um, the pressure up front, more, more man coverage, tighter, all that stuff that we will we will want to see. Hopefully, and this is just a hope here. You know, we see it Saturday versus Alabama. Maybe you know they, they were just kind of holding that back. I don't believe in the staffs holding a whole lot back from these first couple of games. Like I said, the, uh, an extended game plan is definitely going to be in the works for Alabama. There might not much game plan in these first couple of weeks, but I think some of the changes that we wanted to see on defense, I do think possibly this could have been held back some. I think you worked on it just a little bit in these first couple games, but you don't spend your whole game plan. You don't spend the whole game working on those things, especially when you go have your backups in. A lot of that's for your your, your starter reps and, and working on things that you want to work on that you're going to see the rest of the season. But I don't think we were going to see a whole lot of that. And I, look, I, I don't think they're holding this big, gigantic, massive secret playbook for Alabama. Don't get me wrong. I, I, the, and the game plan, they're, they're not. Uh, but I think some of the differences that we wanted to see from Todd Grantham, the new hires, uh, taking everything from last year and changing some things that needed to be changed for this year and how you do things, I think we'll get our first indication of all those changes and we'll see some of those changes uh, this week versus Alabama. But you know, there are times up front where I thought the uh, the defensive line didn't get enough pressure, linebackers not filling the gaps. Uh, I mean, there was either one play from USF where I think it was a tight end uh, kind of come swings around in the hole and just Mama Diabate gets stonewalled on, on, on a run. That's one you'd like to see him. I mean, Diabate's attacking the hole. Uh, so he's probably not expecting that that tight end to come around and pull around and, and, and you know stuff him in the hole there. And USF gets uh, one of their longest runs of the day there. You'd like to see him shed that block and make the tackle out there in the hole. But um, those are things you, you're just going to have to work on. And, and see, I'm sure Alabama saw that, and they'll be trying it again uh, this coming up week. So, you know, there are little things they definitely have to clean up. That second cornerback spot still the worry spot for me on this defense right now. Uh, Marshall Helm have shown no consistency there. Uh, I, I probably lean Marshall right now, getting that second spot from what I've seen through two games when Alabama rolls in Saturday. Uh, but just e either way, not a lot of consistency. You saw those got two guys out there together in the second half. I, I don't think Tyree will play a snap in the second half. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you had Helm and you had Marshall out there together. Uh, getting all the reps that they can get, all the reps that they need heading into SEC play. So that, those are the kind of things that I'm talking about as far as you know, some combos you won't see out there a whole lot unless some injuries happen uh, out there for the Gators. And that was one of them we saw in the second half. So definitely got to clean some things up. Uh, we'll get a much better idea, indication of where this defense is Saturday uh, versus Alabama. So I – I'm not gonna. I'm not too worried about the. De I mean, I, I don't feel any different about the defense after these two games than I did heading into the season. My 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 ultimate factor was going to be Alabama week three and maybe 
that's just maybe more of the barometer uh, of where I was going to go for this defense. And now I, this is probably going to be one of the best offenses they play all year uh, there. So I think you, you can even if it looks pretty bad, I do think you can expect improvement just because of the opponent uh, coming up. Saturday, and then the opponents after that. Uh, but, you know, there, we'll get a much better feel, a much better idea of some improvements where this defense stands after Saturday. All right. Let me get a few of you more in here. A few more of you in here. There we go. Hey, Dave, I know we've spoke a lot about the offense and defense. I'm really interested in special teams, uh, particularly the kicking game, given that I'm not sure we've kicked a field goal. Um, <laughs> and I know I, I know there weren't there haven't been too many opportunities, but one that sticks out to me was the end of the FAU game where we had AR in. We're on the about the 30 yard line and we just let the clock run out. Felt like a really good time to to trot out the new kicker to see if they could, you know, bang in a 45, 47 yard field goal. I, I, do you have any indication of what the trust level is there? Because something tells me that we're not going to get away with no field goals against Bama. That's a good point. Yeah. You haven't seen Florida attempt one. Um, I know dating back to the spring, and this was before Christmas, Christmas was on campus. They did not feel good about uh, field goal kicking. Uh, and maybe that's bled over uh, and to fall out. I, for, I haven't heard one way or the other, positive or negative, uh, about this uh, defense or uh, just special teams in, in, in the kickoff and, and field goal. I have – no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, we haven't seen it. We haven't necessarily heard, heard anything uh, about where it is. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I think Saturday we probably get our first indication there too because uh, you know, Florida's been scoring touchdowns uh, when they get uh, – or, or turning the ball over or – uh, you know, turnover on downs uh, when they get in the field goal range. You haven't had that chance to uh, you know, get a field goal. And you're right. I think just for some confidence, you probably would have liked to see there at the in, in that FAU scenario that you laid out. You probably would have liked to see, at least for confidence, and maybe to see where they're at and how they'll handle it, uh, get their get their shot there. But you're right. We'll probably we probably will see it on Saturday. No, right. Who else is in here? Good morning, Dave. Hey, Dave. Greetings, greetings from Birmingham. Uh, looking forward to coming up there this Saturday with my wife and watching the ball game this weekend. Got got a question for you. The one I got is, uh, do you think Mullen would do Emory like we did Felipe Franks when we went to Mississippi State with the uh, short passes, kind of get him something? build that confidence up early and maybe take a few shots, you know, with the, um, giving them the short routes early. That is going to be a thing. Uh, the, 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 we're, we'll see a game plan more so than we saw these first two weeks heading up and going against Alabama. That, that, that you'll see, a, you'll see, a, you'll see a game plan for Emory. You'll see a game plan for the offense, hopefully AR as well. But I do agree this, this would be the first, extensive game plan we'll see from Florida all year. Uh, so I do expect probably more of a lean on the run game because uh, we've seen that work the first couple of weeks. Uh, will that work versus Alabama? Not sure, but I think that's where you have to start. Uh, that That's what this offense does well in these first couple games. I think they knew that coming into the season as well. Look, they, it's no surprise. You know, this is not breaking news or anything like that. They've been looking for this game all offseason. They're not worried about FAU. They're not worried about USF. This is what you were working for. This is what you were working toward all offseason, heading into the season, uh, and, and getting ready for this game. So it, a lot of the game plan probably has been you know, worked on. You install it this week. You fine-tune it. But it's been worked on. They, 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 you know what You know the monster that you had coming up now. Of course, that's not going to define your season, and uh -huh. maybe some things. I mean, maybe some things have changed a little bit. If you know, with AR and the game plan, and we'll see what his status is throughout the week and, and on Saturday as well. But I do believe, you know, with Emory being the, the the starter all spring, all fall camp, heading into the season, they they've been working on some things that. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. You probably had to adjust a little bit. You had to go see Alabama play a game with all their new pieces versus Miami a couple of weeks ago. And that's yeah. pretty much, the, and that's pretty much the game you're going to use to to to, to fine tune your game plan a little bit with all the new pieces Alabama has as well. Uh, but you know this 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 will be the first game plan game, and I, and I agree that you. What do you do in the passing game? 
game plan wise? Do you roll the pocket out? Do you, do, do, you know, Emory's first completion versus USF was, you know, a little roll out to find Rick Wells down the field a little bit. I think you have to move the pocket. That probably cuts the reads in half a little bit, but maybe that helps Emory uh, yeah. some in, that, in, in that regard too. Um, like I said, I, it, it's going to start and end with the run game for me. I, you're going to have to pass the ball to win. Uh, but you're going to have to make some big throws to win, I think, eventually. But you're going to – the run game is going to have to be there for Florida to have a shot. I don't necessarily think you have to have a fast start on offense, but that's all dependent on you getting a fast start on defense. That means yeah. you got to you got to hold. Be a tight game throughout. Yeah. So that's the you know that's uh so for defense the fast start for me is more on the defense than it is the offense. You've got to keep Alabama from you know uh, twenty points in the in the first quarter and a half or anything like. You, you're not going to have to be. You don't want to be able. You don't want to have to fight your way back throughout this whole game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I I got a lot of Bama Bama buddies up this way, and all they've been asking the last two weeks is, "Who is y'all's backup, man? That guy is a beast." And uh, I was telling them, <laughs> I said, "Hey, he's a freshman, red shirt freshman, but uh, hopefully AR gets gets the uh gets healed up, and hopefully he'll be able to play this week because I know he's a difference maker out there." I appreciate it, Dave. Thanks, man. Hey, David, this is Coach Gunn. Hey, Coach. So, I've been hearing a lot of traffic in the fan base, like, oh, you know, Emory's struggling, we're about to get blown out by Bama and all this other nonsense. I think it's important to remember that Bryce Young has not faced any adversity yet at the quarterback position. He's a young quarterback. He hasn't faced any adversity. And the Alabama team is a young team that hasn't faced any adversity yet. And come Saturday, we have a couple things go our way. We run the ball. You know, I think things can get pretty interesting regardless of who's at quarterback for us. Um, and, and I'll extend that a little bit too. Uh, I, I like that part of it. This is Bryce Young's first true road game and, and a raucous crowd, you know, Gainesville Gator Nation will be ready uh, Saturday. So hopefully that plays into it. Hopefully that plays into what I was just talking about with the defense and, and getting off to a good start. I mean, and that's going to be part of it too. I mean, Florida's going to have to do their job to keep the fan base in the game. You know, if 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 the, if, the, if Alabama's not scoring early and it's a close tie, it can even be low scoring. It doesn't matter. You got to keep Alabama from from scoring and putting the game away pretty early, that, and that keeps the fan base in it. That's going to keep the fan base loud all game, uh, and, and and keep you know hollering and, and distracting and putting all the all the all the noise on Alabama's offense to you know, try and make something happen. So that that is a good point too. You got you've got to keep the crowd into it, and the, the the fast start I think for defense plays into it as well. And look, go back. These big home games, you know, we'll, we'll give Dan Mullen credit. We'll give, you know, this Gator team credit. These big home games that, you know, we have circled on the calendar before the season starts, 2018 LSU, uh, Auburn in 2019, when the swamp is full and the swamp is rocking and, and, and Gator Nation's ready. You know, Florida's, Florida's rose to the occasion in, in, in those games. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a different beast this week. You know, Alabama's different. It, it, it just is. They are. But at least we, you do have something to fall back on just a little bit to see, all right, well, we, we've been in, in a similar scenario just a, a couple times in Dan Mullen's tenure, and the Swamp is ready, the team was ready. Uh, they've made some plays in the fourth quarter to pull out a victory. So that, that, that's, that's my whole point of not letting this game get out of hand early. Take your chances in the fourth quarter like you did versus LSU and Auburn. Make some plays in the fourth quarter come out with a victory. But it's, to me, it is all dependent. Keeping the game close, not getting – not letting it get – not letting it get out of hand and let Gator Nation and that crowd just kind of take over and help control the game for this defense. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent. Most of the time, the better team wins, no matter home or away. I know betting odds are set home and away. But still, to me, most of the time, the better team wins. But there are certain scenarios where the home crowd can make a huge difference. And we missed that last year. We missed that last year, and I think you've seen that play a little effect in college football this year with with, with some of the inexperience of teams going on the road. 
uh, and, and, and trying to play well on the road with not having to deal with crowds last year. This is that Alabama's team first chance in, since 2019 to go face a full crowd. This is the first big SEC game of the year for the whole conference. Yeah, you had Kentucky, Missouri. That was a big game. But this is, you know, your traditional powers. This is your, you know, your schools that you look for in big games to happen in the SEC. This is our first big matchup since 2019 uh, for, for the SEC. So you're going to get the CBS music if you're watching on TV. Uh, but Gainesville will be ready. And you know, like I said, the defense has got to do their part to help this Gator Nation crowd just kind of stay in the game and, and uh, you know, uh, abuse Bryce Young in that offense with uh, with the cheering and all the, uh, the loudness that comes with it. All right, who else is in here? Anybody else wants to uh, speak? I know there's a few of you in here. Good morning, hey, Dave. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I was I was wondering about the the second corner spot. You got um, with Helm and Marshall not not playing all that great. I was just wondering if you think they. They haven't seemed to do it yet, but may work Perkins outside some as good as he's playing the star. And I was wondering why we haven't seen Blades much. Um, Blades was hurt in the first game. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, shout out David Sertiquist here. He was he had seats right there where the team comes out of the tunnel, and Blades was basically in the tunnel the whole second half of the game in street clothes. I did see him on the sideline Saturday versus USA. He was in street clothes as well, so he was probably dealing with some kind of injury he suffered in the first half of the FAU game. So that's part of it. Hopefully he's back to put himself in that rotation too. I mean, this was the game I was looking for, for Blades to basically – make his presence felt. He, he joined the team late. He needed to go through fall camp, go through a couple games. And this was the first game. And you're playing up against Alabama before at Texas A&M. And maybe that's why they didn't rush him out there too soon uh, and, and play versus USF. Hopefully that's the case. And maybe we'll, uh, we'll get to ask Dan Mullen about Blades uh, hopefully today uh, in his press conference to kind of see where he's at, see if he'll make more of an impact uh, today, get on the field and, and actually play some. Because like I said, this was a game I circled for him to be like, okay, well, you've had enough time now to get acclimated into the defense. Uh, and this is an SEC game. You've played in SEC games before. Now you need to go, you know, make not necessarily make some plays, but go out there and contribute on defense and help and, and help in that uh, role. And you're right. My thing is, I, I, I'm probably keeping Perkins in the star uh, just because I think Florida needs a playmaker at that position. Uh, we saw him make a great reaction play the other day against USF. You know. I, Ball stone. He's there, right on the defender, deflects the pass away. We haven't seen that type of play except from from Kyrie, uh, basically back there in that secondary. As far as DBs go, um, man, if Florida had a better option, that, that I mean, Travis Johnson hasn't necessarily. You know, he started there uh, in the star position uh, the first game, and we didn't necessarily see the aggressiveness and the same style of play that we saw from Perkins. I think. I, I take my shot, keep Perkins at star. I, I You've got to – you know, Marshall's going to have to live up to that five-star building at some point. I mean, Elm apparently, you know, earned a job all throughout fall camp, uh, but we just haven't seen it translate you know, for, the, for those two guys yet. You know Alabama's circling that matchup right now. You know that's what they're going to be looking for. Um, you know, they'll, they'll take their shots at Elam too. You know, it's just Alabama. They, they're they going to take their shots no matter who. But, you know, you, you know they've probably seen – what we've all seen in that second cornerback spot. Um, I don't, and, you know, and I, I don't know if Perkins even fits in that second cornerback spot. I know he's doing well at star and maybe the reason he got, maybe he started his role there this season was because he was playing that role better than the second cornerback spot. I don't know. Uh, as far as that goes, uh, I like having that playmaker at star um, from what, and what we've seen at Perkins. I probably roll with it at least, some more right now. And plus, I don't know if that's the change you want to make right now heading into Alabama. Um, does it end up hurting two spots instead of just one spot if you make that move uh, right now? So uh, it is tough to say because we, to me, that's the biggest weakness I've seen so far in this defense is that second cornerback spot. And yes, you'd like to see it remedied. And that might be a way to remedy it. Remedy it. Oh, wow. Well, can't, can't get that word. You know, get that fixed. Uh, and, um, I don't know. It is a tough decision just because I think that is one where Alabama is just going to take advantage and those guys are just going to have to step up. That that That's all that's all there is to it for me right now. So hopefully the defense is getting the pressure up front and, and it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, but it's, it's going to start there. 
because if they don't have time to get to that second read, or it's probably going to be Alabama's first read, honestly. They'll draw up some plays to get that, you know, to, to be the first read. So the, the, the uh, defense is really going to have to step up up front, not give Young too much time, too much time to get to his progressions, to get to those reads, to throw the ball in that first read. Uh, we've seen these first couple games where – it's been a lot of just quick throws to get the ball out of hand because you know, these teams know. Uh, even FAU, USF, they got good enough coaches to at least know that. Uh, hey, look, we got to get the ball out. You know, as far as the defensive front, they'll they'll live in the backfield all day if we five seven step drop. You know, that's just not what that's not what we can do against this Florida front. Um, Alabama, we'll see if they have some confidence to be able to five seven step drop, get the ball out, uh, or is it going to be more of a quick passing game so so Young doesn't get. Uh, you know, the pr- pressure. I think Alabama's going to f- feel pretty comfortable that they can rely on their offensive line uh, to block Florida's front. Uh, but so you know that means it's going to be up to Florida. It's going to be up to that to that front to go get pressure, consistent pressure to help protect that second cornerback spot uh, there for the Gators. So that is the worry for me uh, as well. I keep I keep Perkins at star for uh, at least for now, unless we you know we we just see that second cornerback spot become uh, an issue. Uh, over and over again, um, and hopefully we'll get to ask Mullen today about Blaze and see his uh, see his status for the game this week. Appreciate it. Hey, Dave. Uh, is there any concern within the program that we might lose Grantham to Memphis Mike and the FSU people for his – talents at prevent defense or or is that not a concern <laughs> um i don't think i don't think people would say that was a concern if that was the case <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying there oh man that was that was something else um i mean he says after the game this is norvell you know, well you know there was too much time on the clock to play defense there was six seconds there was six seconds i mean from where they were at on the field it was going to take that amount of time to run one play uh, to get uh, in, you know, in range to, to win that game. Uh, that was I, I don't understand Norvell and his reasoning for not playing prevent defense there. Um, I'm glad we stay up. I'm glad a lot of us stayed up late to see that because uh, you know FSU was feeling good about themselves after a loss to Notre Dame, uh, but uh, now uh, we get to poke fun a little bit. You know, no more no more Georgia Southern jokes uh, when it comes to Florida and Georgia Southern and, and that loss to an SES school um, back in 2014 um, or 2013. And now uh, FSU's got an even worse loss on the resume when you look at it. So that was uh, that, that was fun to see. That, that was fun to see after uh, a week that they were uh, having some moral victories for playing Notre Dame close. Got to think that's a primetime uh, candidate for a Kirby Award. <laughs> yeah, Will and I were talking about that for sure. Uh, about uh, you know him giving that award award away this week too. So uh, we'll we'll see where he goes with it. But it's got to it's got to go there. Well, that, that would be the second one too for not playing. I think he gave it to Norvell last week for not playing Milton. So. All right. Anybody else wants to want, wants to get in here? I got a busy morning, so I'll be getting on the road soon. But good morning, Dave. Co- hey, man, how are you? Man, I'm trying to figure out why are we not playing the one black? I mean, the guy it looks the part, and like he's been dedicated to us for a long time. I'm just trying to see why are we not playing him. Uh yeah, he did have what he had two tackles the other day. I think I was two right. Yeah, two tackles. Yeah, two tackles um early in the game as well. So you know credit there. He did play. I want to go back to the first game because that's probably some of what you're you know talking about there. Um, I will say there was a part in fall camp where he was late for meetings, and that might have been a punishment for that. Um, you know, I'm not trying to you know, shout him out and, you know, put him in any kind of trouble or anything. But that was that was something that was happening in the fall camp. I know he was late for maybe a couple meetings or something like that. And maybe why he didn't play in the first game. With, maybe, and look, Mullen didn't say that. I, that's a, that's just me guessing. I'm, I'm just trying to piece two things together, why he didn't play more either in that first game. But I do know he was late for meetings sometime in fall camp. That may have been punishment uh, for that and, you know, not playing in that first game. Um, and part of it, too, is he's learning. Uh, and – from what I've been told about, about that, Grantham's defense is complex. That's nothing new uh, with us. And we know how the staff is about putting guys out there if they're not fully fully capable. 
Um, and like I thought we'd see you more in the second half uh, as well when you had a lot of guys back there on the defense that you were rotating through a whole lot of players. Uh, but maybe they consider him a key piece and he you know played a little bit early. A lot of those guys who played early did not play in the second half. Maybe that's one way to look at it. Um, maybe that's another player we can ask Mullen about today. Of you know maybe not why playing maybe not playing in the first game and then playing little in, in the second game, but you know didn't make his presence felt. Get a tackle early uh, versus USF, and look, I think we'll get our answer this week about who they feel good about. I mean, look, you know, you, everybody knows who we're playing. And uh, you got to put your best players out there, players that you trust, players that you uh, trust to go out there and make plays and do the right thing. So I think these first couple games, it's really hard to get a read on because these this staff likes to tinker. You don't know what they're working on. They want to put some film out there on a lot of guys. I mean, so that that that's part of it. So we'll get a we'll get a better feel this week of like you know, who they trust, who they have out there. And, and then go from there about playing time and who the, you know, even in, so, in some of the young guys that they trust. Like I said, you know, some of these young guys that are playing, um, you know, they're not going to be playing all together. But are, are guys like Prince William and Nealon, can they go fill in for a, you know, um, uh, a Zachary Carter when Zachary Carter needs a breather? You know, do you feel have, have you felt have you felt comfortable about what he's put on film the last couple of weeks to go put him out there? Chris Bogle, who's I thought played very well. The, the, the first couple of weeks has he I, I think another player that you could probably just say a slash starter because I think that's probably where he's at right now is he going to start over Britton Cox no um is he going to split time with Britton Cox he probably should I mean I think he's done enough out there to to go out there and make a name for himself make some plays in these first couple of games he had six total tackles uh versus USF so he's you know, putting putting those stats up there Tyron Hopper uh look I mean Ventro Miller is going to be probably out versus Alabama uh, he's injured, uh, maybe be out for a while. So a lot of people are going to get their wish of seeing more Tyron Hopper, uh, Mamou Diabate there at linebacker. Uh, we'll see what Der- you know, Derek Wingo hasn't played a whole lot these first couple games. So there there are some young players besides Black that you know got sprinkled in these first couple weeks. And we'll see where the staff does about him versus Alabama. If you see Bogle out there, if you see Black out there, if you, see, you know, Hopper, you're going to see out there now because of Miller's injury. Uh, you know we'll, that that'll let us know what they feel about uh, these guys. I think we'll, we'll get a better feel this week. I, I I don't want to guess too much. The only thing I can guess, the only thing I will guess about is maybe why Black didn't play uh, that first week. But as far as number of snaps go and all that, it's, it's very hard to, to, to tell why and what the staff is actually working on and who they want to see more of in certain situations. Maybe maybe in fall camp they have felt better about some players. And, they, and, and look, they, this guy did this. We know he can do this. Uh, we'll we'll hold him back just a little bit. But I want to see uh, I want to see what uh, you know Amari Bernie can do now better at, at linebacker. I want to see him more out there. I want to see, uh, you know, Bogle. I want to see, I almost said Chatfield, but we know he's not playing because <laughs> I keep, I keep put him in that young group, but, uh, you know, just in, in Princely, you know, some of those younger guys out there, you know, these are guys I want to see more of in this situation. So that just, you know, we'll get a, we'll get a better feel. We'll get a better feel Saturday uh, about who they feel comfortable with, who they're ready to roll out there, who they feel confident to go out there and make some plays. All right, we got a busy, busy day here. Real, real work, real life gets in the way <laughs> a little bit here from football. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is about the time I was looking to, to 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 end this one anyway. Everybody, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for the conversation. I uh, really, really like bringing this to you guys, getting you guys involved more. You know, been really involved with Twitter anyway for 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 the podcast, but this is a brand new avenue uh, to to get it in there, get your voice out there. It really, uh, re- really is another way to get some more content out there for Gator Nation. Hear from you, in, in, include you guys. I mean, Gators Breakdown would be nothing without uh, the support and and interaction I have with a lot of you guys. So you guys make it fun. Um, big week, big week. Go have fun. Like I said at the beginning, go have fun with it. You know, you, you don't know. We can guess at an outcome. We can guess at a, at a likely outcome. But go have fun with it. I mean, this is Florida-Alabama week. However you felt a couple weeks ago, 
go out there and feel and feel that way this week too. I'm going to try and do my part as well. You know, I mean, of course, I mean, no breaking news. I'll be picking Alabama to win the game, but you know, it, that that doesn't mean you can't have fun with it. It doesn't mean we can't be fans. That means we, we can't go. Just you know, uh, look. Well, I'll be walking to the swamp sometime on Saturday. And I'm going to talk myself into somehow far to winning this game. <laughs> that's just that's going to be the fan in me. So I think uh, hopefully you guys feel that way too. Hopefully we can all find a way for our Gators to uh go to go out there and get a big victory versus Alabama. Go. "Quote unquote, shock the world." I know that's an overused statement right now, but uh, go get some, uh, you know, go go have fun with it this week. You know, go talk your trash if you want to to some Alabama fans. You know, and look, you in the Florida winds, you'll look back at it and say, "Man, I'm glad I'm glad I did that. I'm, I'm glad we did that and, and, and have fun and, and have fun with it." So Saturday's gonna be fun. Well, all week's gonna be fun in Gainesville. I'm sure Friday night will be a whole lot of fun. Saturday will certainly be a whole lot of fun uh, down there and getting ready for this game, all the tailgates and. Um, uh, all, all the good stuff that comes with being a fan, you know, that will be ramped up hopefully this week. So go have fun with it. Uh, be a fan. Go cheer on the Gators. Go talk some trash to Alabama fans. They don't know. They don't know how to talk trash anyway. But I guess that's what happens when you win a lot. But uh, that's true. I, I see true in here. He he, he knows. Uh, he and I talked about it when I go to SEC media day. He, he'll join us. Alabama fans can't. They don't know how to talk trash. But that might be because you know they win a whole. So who knows? Uh, just point to the trophy case, I guess. But uh, go have fun with it. Go be some. Go be some Gator fans this week. And uh, holler at you guys later this week. You'll have a big preview up. Uh, Will Miles and I tonight, of course, on our Monday night show. Um, will be a whole lot of fun, as, as it always is. Uh, with Will, we'll look back at the USF game. We'll talk quarterback, of course, as well. Uh, look forward to the Alabama game just a little bit. I'll have a preview later on this week. And um, big week. It is a big week. Let's go have fun with it. All right, that'll do it. I'll see you guys later. And uh, another uh, another Twitter Spaces on Friday.